Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. So in this video we are going to be reviewing Oscar winning Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse which is a nice and refreshing new take on the whole Spider-Man universe. You know we've seen the Peter Parker storyline done hundreds of times in movies, TV shows, cartoons, gaming, everything. So it's really nice to kind of see something different within this universe. I must say I do feel like this movie is a little bit overhyped but you know don't let that stop you watching if you haven't seen it already. It is a really cool movie from start to finish, and let's dissect it section by section. So this movie tells the origin story of Miles Morales, who is the Spider-Man of the Ultimate Spider-Man universe, and this movie kind of acts as his kind of origin story. The film kind of has two main storylines, it's the Miles Morales kind of origin story, and then it's kind of all of this Spider-Verse stuff happening. So let's look at the Miles Morales stuff first. So, Miles Morales as a character is, is in the beginning living with his parents, he's not that close to his dad, he's a lot closer to his uncle, um, and one day his dad is dropping him off at a brand new school because he's very very clever, so he's living in the dorms in this brand new school, and you know he doesn't really fit in, um, and he's just kind of readjusting himself to this whole new kind of environment, and one day he gets bitten by a radioactive spider, and is kind of exploring this new power and responsibility that he has. So that's kind of like the Miles Morales arc of the movie. And then it's all the Spider-Verse stuff. So the main villain of the film is Kingpin and he is trying to use this new piece of technology that he's created which allows him to kind of connect with other universes. I won't spoil the reason about why he's doing this because you'll understand his motivations in the movie. But he's trying to go into another universe to try to find someone, basically. As a reaction to him doing that, there are other Spider-Men from different universes that have now come into this universe and are trying to go back to their particular home. So you have Miles Morales, which is this universe's Spider-Man. You have Peter Parker, you have Spider-Gwen, you have Spider-Man Noir, who is kind of like a, like a Spider-Man from the Noir ages. You have Spider-Ham, who is Peter Parker but bitten by a radioactive pig. And then you have Penny Parker, who in her universe was adopted by Uncle Ben and Aunt May. And she kind of is a Japanese anime type character and controls a Spider-Man robot. So the movie is kind of, like I said, split into two. You kind of have the Mars Morales stuff on one side and then you kind of have all the Spider-Verse stuff on the other side. So in terms of the characters of this film, they've done something really clever by kind of bringing in the Spider-Men of different universes and kind of bringing them into one place. So it's always going to be a fun ride. And then kind of on top of that, kind of having a different Spider-Man, kind of finally giving Miles Morales the, the time on the big screen that he's always deserved and kind of seeing of the ultimate Spider-Man universe kind of come into life is just really, really cool. So let's kind of look at them one by one. So Miles Morales is a great character and is kind of like the lead character in this film and you can kind of you know see it through his eyes and you're kind of exploring and experiencing everything through him and it's just really nice to kind of see him you know exploring himself exploring his family life exploring his new school life exploring his new identity as spider-man and then exploring his relationship with these other spider-man characters so his arc in this film is just really really interesting then we have peter parker I won't reveal too much about you know his particular storyline because obviously we're going to spoilers but it's just really interesting kind of seeing the Peter Parker character being a bit more of a secondary character for once and kind of being more of a mentor and then just the kind of the ups and downs that this particular Peter Parker goes through so that's really really interesting. Gwen Stacy, Spider Gwen is really really cool as well. You know that character has got a lot more prevalence since the Amazing Spider-Man movies and kind of bringing Peter Parker's you know, first girlfriend to the big screen has been really, really good. And I feel like she might even get her own spin-off series from this. I think, you know, the Spider-Gwen character has just gathered up a lot of uh, a bigger fan base over time. So it'll be really interesting to see what they do with her character in the future. I feel like the other three Spider-Man characters are a bit secondary. So it's Peter Parker, Noir Spider-Man and Penny Parker, they're, they're a bit more secondary. They are kind of there for like the action sequences and kind of like the group ensemble pieces, but 
they're a little bit more more background, I suppose. And then we kind of have you know the other characters in terms of Miles Morales's family unit, kind of the characters within his school life, and then the villains as well. So the villains are a little bit disappointing, I must say. So Kingpin, you know, you understand his motivations about why he's doing what he's doing, but other than that, he's just like a bit of a baddie for the sake of being a baddie. You don't really get much depth to him. I know it's a bit of a massive cast of characters that they have, so they didn't want to maybe go too much in depth in that character because they're kind of exploring all these other characters over here. And you know, Kingpin is a villain, so they just kind of kind of had him as a big honcho char type character. But you know, in terms of villains, I would have just wanted to explore that character a bit more. But overall, the um, characters of the film do a really, really good job. The visuals in this movie are very unique and very, very cool. It definitely feels like a comic book is coming to life, and I know that was the intention, and it definitely, you know, you definitely realise that, and it definitely comes through, because it does feel like you're kind of watching, like, a definite comic book type movie. And the animation is very unique. It's not like anything you've seen before. Um, and, you know, all the action sequences look really, really cool. Kind of the universe times when you're battling certain different characters look really, really cool. You know, Peter Parker and Miles Morales swinging looks really, really good. So, you know, it visually looks really, really good. And you can see why it won all the awards that it did, because it looks absolutely amazing. My personal preference, I'm very biased towards the 90s cartoon. And I feel like that visual identity for, you know, Spider-Man and all of his characters um, is my personal favourite. But that shouldn't take away from this movie, it's just, you know, I personally prefer a different style. But, you know, this the visual output of this movie looks really, really good. In terms of comparisons, it's really nice to have the lead character be Miles Morales for once because we've seen Peter Parker dominate all of the different platforms with his iteration of Spider-Man. So it's really nice to kind of see, you know, Miles Morales having his time and having something different and unique within the whole Spider-Man universe space. I feel like it's a bit unfair of me to compare Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse to the other Spider-Man movies because, you know, one's kind of live action and one is an animation. So you know, I'm not going to do that comparison, but you know, overall Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is really, really cool. I personally didn't like some of the character iterations, such as the Green Goblin and some of the other characters that you'll see in this film. But that said, you know, it is true to the ultimate Spider-Man versions of them. So, you know, I can understand why they did what they did. I've just got a personal preference to, to a different take on certain characters, but you know, overall, comparatively to other identities of Spider-Man, this movie does kind of hold its own. Overall, I really, really enjoyed Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's a really fun movie from start to finish. It's really funny, it's got really great dramatic moments, it's quite tense in certain parts, and I just can't wait to see where they're gonna take the whole franchise next, if they're gonna keep the whole Spider-Verse aspect, if they're just gonna focus on Miles Morales. Whatever they're gonna do, I feel like it's gonna be awesome and I can't wait to see it. And for that reason, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is gonna get a solid 7.5 out of 10 from me. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.